Hi Fiddlers, I'm Mark Reynolds, coming to you from Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's June 28, 2014, with Session 5 of the Free Fiddle Workshop. I'm going to be following the document I wrote. You can get a copy of this document if you go to dropbox.com in the folder Free Fiddle Workshop. When I'm done with these sessions, you can go to YouTube and look up Free Fiddle Workshop, put dashes in between, same thing with Dropbox. Um, session, you could put the numbers 01 through 10. And also, I'll have samples up there. I have samples up there now, but they need to be updated. They'll be updated by this September. So let's get started with session five. Session five, version 2A of Fiddle Math and Physiology. I'm going to page two. Fiddlers, we have a couple tools here we're going to use with the right arm. And mostly, it's going to talk, I'm going to be talking about the right arm. So we have we have the shoulder and we have the wrist, though I call those ball joints because those can move pretty much any, any direction. The elbow, we have two levers here, the forearm and the upper arm. The elbow is just two-dimensional and this is important. Um, when, whenever you bend, you can only bend along this plane. For, the, uh, for this fiddling style, the right hand, the right hand is just going to be a clamp. It's just going to squeeze tightly. I was told during my 17 years of lessons to have a loose right arm. This fiddle workshop teaches the opposite. We're going to have a very tight and controlled right arm. And the hand is going to be a tight clamp. So that's what I'm talking about on page two. On to page three, wrist orientation and workshop grip. For this fiddling style, I'm going to instruct fiddlers to have the wrist bent upwards. And we're, um, we're going to use a workshop grip, which is just a grab. It's simple, but make sure you do it correctly. Place the, the side of the frog against the palm of the hand, close, and just make sure you're not touching any horsehair, and bend your wrist up. This uh, Placing the frog flat against the palm is kind of conducive to having the wrist up, and this is the workshop grip that we're going to, that we're going to use. We're going to bowl with power. I'll be reminding fiddlers of that before we do each exercise. Two important planes. Um, I'm, on page, I'm on page four. The perpendicular plane. Where the bow want, where, you, where fiddlers want to contact the fiddle, you want the bow right in the middle between the end of the fingerboard and the bridge, right in the middle there. And to get the most effective sound, you want to be perpen, you want to be perpendicular. So you want the bow to come in perpendicular, in the, um, right between the bridge and the and the end of the fingerboard. That's the perpendicular plane that I talk about at the bottom of page four. This um, we're going to. Remember, fiddlers, to orient that perpendicular plane to adjust that orientation. I'm going to show a workshop stance that has the fiddle kind of bending down and a little bit inward. So adjust the per perpendicular plane appropriately, and you can you can pretty much visualize it. There's the there's the bow contact point, and there's the bow. So the perpendicular plane with this orientation actually goes back a little bit because of the way we're holding the fiddle. The wrist shoulder plane is um, on, on page five. In version one, I told fiddlers to always move their wrist towards their shoulder. Version 2A recognizes that fiddlers don't have any choice in the matter. Your, whenever you clamp your arm or expand it, it, it's always wrist to shoulder due to the two-dimensional nature of the elbow. If my arm's like this, wrist to shoulder. If my arm's like this, wrist to shoulder. And what we're going to try to do is get that wrist shoulder plane, the clamp, the movement of the wrist shoulder plane to match the perpendicular line, or the, the perpendicular plane. Seven perpendicular lines at the bottom of, of page five. I talk about the perpendicular plane. Each string has its own what I'll call altitude. Here's the E string, here's the A string, D string, and G string. So there's four strings, and plus there's the there's also the double stops. There's the A E double stop, the D, the A D double stop. And the, and the DG double stop. So there's three more, four lines, three double stops, each of those seven altitudes. So that's seven all together. Each, each of those altitudes will have its own perpendicular line. I'm going, to talk, um, I'm going to talk about that later on. I'm on to page six fundamentals of, of bow movement. The fun, uh, one of the fundamental principles of this workshop is that we're going to use the upper arm as little as possible. It's going to serve as mostly an anchor. And we're going to try to get as much bowing power as possible out of the forearm instead of the upper arm. Here's an important, um, here's an important rule that we're going to follow. On up bow, the forearm will always pull back towards the fiddler. 
not towards the fiddle. You don't push the bow towards the fiddle, you pull them back towards the fiddler. What that will do, now the hand ends up moving that way because of the, bow, the resistance of the bow against the strings. But that, um, one, of the, one of the rules, of, uh, one of the hints I'm going to give is pull back towards the ear. Well, the ear's this way, the fiddle's that way. But if I pull back towards the ear, right away the bow digs into the strings, and the hand ends up moving that way. But the force applied is towards the fiddler, not towards the fiddle. So that's on page five. The upper arm will always be used to change altitudes to, to one of those seven altitudes. Bottom of page six, three methods of bowstring movement. Um, the forearm expand and collapse. That's going to be um, especially covered in, in session six. And on this, we won't move, move the forearm at all. Here's my little prop, my microphone stand. I'm going to go on to page seven. And, and I demonstrated here, when we expand the arm, the up, when we expand the arm, the upper arm should not move. See how it's, it's resting on that, um, on the microphone stand. Don't expand like this. I show uh, what not to do there. Don't expand where your where your upper arm where your upper arm gets off the microphone stand. Learn to expand, um, keeping your upper arm steady. Upper arm method two. Upper arm rotation. Now here again, I'm not. I'm just rotating the upper arm. But we can get bow movement by just rotating the upper arm. And method three. Finally, we're going to move the upper arm off the microphone stand. And but. Whenever we move the, the right arm, will also be accompanied with a rotation to get to get more bow movement. So those are the three methods of bow movement, and those will be covered in sessions six, seven, and eight. Upper arm orientation. I'm on page eight um, during expansion. When on on the partial, this is going to be partial longbow covered in session six. When we just expand the arm and only use about four inches of bow, and this is and you can do a lot of hoedowns with just this. So I'm, if I'm staying on the same string, I'm not even moving my upper arm. But it's important to have the upper arm oriented correctly. And what I did here, you see pictures, I have a, 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 string, a string of yarn between two microphone stands. That string of yarn represents the perpendicular line for the E string. So here, here, here's the E string here. And so this is, that perpendicular line equals where, where my bow needs to go for the E string. Make sure that your initial orientation is good, and you can just eyeball it. So when you put your when you put the fiddle up, eyeball where that perpendicular line is. Now, if I have my elbow too low, and I expand my arm without moving, my my arm dips below uh, below that perpendicular line. If my if I have my elbow too forward, it the um, hand extends outside the perpendicular line, and that's that's what these pictures are on page nine and on to page ten. Or at the bottom of page nine, here is the here is the upper arm orientation that works for me. Have I have the 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 upper arm about equal to my hip? I'm using about this angle, and when I expand my arm, that's roughly equivalent to that perpendicular line for the eastern. So make sure you get that orientation right. You'll be reminded about that before the exercises. Bow speed, fiddlers. If you need to speed up a song, you do not need to speed up the bow. Another way to do it is cut the distance in half. And one of my ironic um, bow speed recommendations that this workshop will make, this workshop will recommend faster bow speed on the slow songs by the waltzes. You do, do get a more robust sound with, a, with more bow. And the waltzes are conducive to moving the bow a lot. On hoedowns, this workshop is going to recommend a slow bow speed. Keep that bow under control. And we'll, we'll uh, talk about that in the sessions. Bow altitude. Here's, here's something that I see fiddlers do. If you're playing on an A string, and you need to get to the D string, that's, and so the D string's that way, some fiddlers may have a, a, a tendency to want to move their arm that way to get to the D. That doesn't do it. You have to move the bow up to get to the D string. I have an exercise in session six where we demonstrate that. When you change, when you change strings, beware of this, fiddlers that when you change strings, here's, here's my bow on the E string, and the point of contact is here. If I go to the G string, my point of contact changes. In other words, the, ba the balance on the bow is not going to be the same. It's easy to see when you're, uh, when you're moving a bow across a string, it's easy to see that the point of contact is changing. It's not as obvious when you change strings that your point, point of contact changes. And the point here is that 
your balance on the bow will change as you change strings, expect it to change. When I used to fiddle, I used to look for the same balance, and I'd change strings and keep looking for the same balance. Don't do that. Expect the balance to change. Bow vertical angle of attack on page, um, on page 11. What I was taught is to have, uh, the vertical angle of attack is the angle that the bow hits the strings. I was taught to have a vertical angle of attack about like this. I, I took lessons for a total of 20 years. When I watch the real good violinists, that's not what they do. When they're at a, to when they're at a total down bow, their, uh, their bow's almost vertical, and when they're at a total up bow, it's very slanted. I don't know how they do that. I wasn't taught that. But my point here is what I was taught is not what the good fiddlers do. Um, on this, um, we'll have a very const uh, a pretty much constant um, angle of attack due to the upper wrist orientation. I'm at the bottom of page 12, bow grip, the claw. We're going to do the exercises using the workshop grip. I've developed a, 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 a grip that's a little more effective than that. I'm not going to talk about it much here. I call it the claw. The reason I like the claw, I'm grabbing the bow at the end. I'm not going to talk much more about that. Session 10 covers the claw. But if you take a look, if you take a look at a top-down view of the claw, the bow angles back. And what that does is that allows me to keep my right arm, my bowing arm, further back. I also squeeze with the ring finger against the frog. That's a nice small point of contact for extra control. Um, see uh, version 10 for the claw, but we'll just use the workshop grip for now. Chin rest on the right side, page 13. I put the chin rests on, on the right side of the fiddle. Version 1 taught to play without a chin rest. I played without a chin rest for six months and my seam needed to be gluing and I affected the varnish. So, uh, so version 2 teaches have a chin rest. For the purposes of this workshop, if, uh, fiddlers probably aren't going to show up with chin rest on the right side. It's not going to hurt your instrument to play without a chin rest, do these exercises for a day or two to see if you want this to do this style. So go ahead and make, maybe even a week or two, and then if you decide that this is the style that you want, then put a chin rest on, um, take your chin rest off the left side and move it to the right side. Um, session one has more comments on the chin rest. Don't play without a chin rest for an extended period of time. You may affect your instrument. On, I'm on to page 14, bow volume. Traditional fiddling teaches that more bow is more volume. In this style, we're, the weight of the arm is below the fiddle. So we can get plenty of volume by using the, by using the weight of the arm, not by using more bow. So, we'll, uh, so the weight of the arm will provide uh, balance. I'm at the bottom of page 14. I'm going to go on, on to page 15, best music in Hillbilly Beat. What Fiddlers, what you want is you want to play this music as cleanly as possible. I'm at the top, no crunches, no squeaks, no intermediate sounds. And to really get snap in the music, I just have a little picture here of, of a hillbilly beat. If you take a look at music notation, and they sh they'll show a long note and then two short notes, and it looks like each of the short notes is exactly half of the long note. To get real snap in the music, what you do is you delay and move those and move those two notes at the to the end. That's called the hillbilly beat. I'm, I'll talk about that more in session seven. I'm on to page 16, feeling the music. Fiddlers, I've been told to feel the music. This workshop teaches don't feel the music. Instead, listen to the music. Loose wrist and arm on page 16. Fiddlers, I was taught to have a loose wrist and arm during fiddling. This workshop teaches the opposite. The, the wrist needs to be flexible, but it's going to be tight. Same thing with the right arm. That's how we're going to get power and, and control. Natural right arm twist on the bottom of page 16 and on to page 17. Here's a picture here. If you take your, um, your hand flat out and you, you um, contract your arm, when you get to the end, if you keep pulling, your hand just naturally spins around. Just be aware of that when we pull, do an up bow, that's going to be a factor in how it feels. Bow does not leave the strings, middle of, uh, page, middle of page 17. That used to be an old timing rule. I have not seen that rule enforced recently, but I see merit to that rule, and that's what this workshop teaches, and that's how I play. Once the song starts, with the exception of maybe a two beat introduction, after that, the bow does not leave the strings. Two keys to the universe. Um, to finish this up, I'm going to talk about these, um, the two keys to the universe more in, in a follow up session. One key. 
how, fiddlers, how are you going to learn to play all this stuff? And the answer is you have to know how to practice. And here are the two keys to the musical universe that if you practice using these methods, your fiddling will improve significantly. Key number one is to slow down a song, note by note, analyze each song. With the, with the bow control, we can do that. We can play one note at a time and then, then stop. The other key is how do you get your left hand under control with all, with all, the, with all the notes. The key number two is going to be squawk notes. Well, like I said, I'll demonstrate those in the, in the following in the follow up videos. Real quick, if uh, here's, here's um, the first couple notes of um, Whiskey Before Breakfast. Now, on a, what a squawk note is, a squawk note, you just touch the string and you don't, you don't press down. And what that does, And what that does, that teaches your fingers to press down too lightly, an easily correctable flaw. And what you'll find is that you teach your fingers to lift up as little as possible, to press down as lightly as possible, and to move independently. That's going to be a challenge. Those are the two keys to the uh, musical universe. Fiddlers, I'm Rock Reynolds. It's been a pleasure serving your fiddle educational needs. I'll see you fiddlers in session six.